This is the last of the more lightly traveled St. Paul local lines. So we have the Hope, the Mariah, the State Street, State Street Striker, and Cherokee. And I got a different map for you today. Because the East 4th Street line uh, quit in 1939 and the State Street South Robert line quit in 1938, I couldn't use the 1947 map I've been using because those were gone. And so this is a Twin City Lines map from 1922, and it is a very not to scale track map. And, you know, there's all kinds of interesting little things on here. For example, you can see there's a sand pit down here on Concord Avenue. There's uh, the other sand pits that they had uh, up by the State Fair. There's an additional siding um, on the intercampus line that I would like to know more about. Um, and there's also one, this might be a sand pit down here off of West 7th Street. So, you know, kind of funny extra, extra trackage. So the first is Hope Street, which is East 4th Street. And just to go uh, back, whoops, come on, Isaacs. Just to go back, it came out East 7th Street to Hope Avenue. Now, this is only one block here. It looks like a lot more to East 4th Street. And this was really one of the lightest lines in the system. But what was distinctive about it is for much of its life until about 1936 or so, it was through routed with the Fort Snelling lines of both cities. And so it actually started on Plymouth Avenue in North Minneapolis, went all the way out Minnehaha to Fort Snelling. The cars continued 7th and all the way out here. So this, this for a while was probably almost the longest line in the system. And because it quit so early, we have like just about no photos of it. So here's one. This was at the very beginning when it was uh, paired with Randolph. I have no idea where this is. It could be on Randolph. It could be on Hope Street. But I thought, well, we have so few pictures. Let's just run this one. What a cute car. Yeah, that's one of the Class C cars. That's one of the shorties. Uh, 35 yeah. footers that they that they build for the lighter lines. When you say light line, you mean light traffic? Yeah, lightly traveled. They had, I don't know, a couple, three dozen of these things uh, that they could put on the quiet lines. And you'll notice there's no peanut row. And well, no, that's right. There, there wasn't anyway. So uh, this is not very good shot is on 4th Street, about a block from the end of the line. And this is on the Y at 4th and Atlantic. And once again, this is like all we have on this line. So we'll move on to the Mariah line where we have more. Now the Mariah line, which was eventually paired with Fort Snelling when they separated the two, uh, when they got rid of this through routing to Minneapolis and just went to Fort Snelling, they then paired West 7th Street with Mariah. So it went out 7th and the Mariahs for the old several blocks on Mariah Avenue. And then Hastings Avenue, which is now Hudson Road, and then Earl Street. And then what doesn't show on here from 1905 to 1909, there was about a quarter mile extension to Mounds Park. And you'll see a picture of that in a minute. And then in 1914, they, uh, the city mandated an extension, about a one mile extension out Burns Avenue. And it says Clarence, but it actually went to English. And... This was done over the objections of Twin City Lines, and so they wound up running a shuttle, and they ran it with a motorman only and charged no fare because uh, they took in so little ridership on it that uh, it wouldn't pay for a conductor. And so apparently the story is that the mothers who, wanted, who were busy doing something would put their kids on this thing, and they'd just ride back and forth while the mother, like a babysitter, like a daycare <laughs> center, while the mothers were doing something else. So, Mariah, um, this is the corner of uh, Hudson Road right here and Earl Street. And this was about to change, um, make a major change because Hudson Road was Highway 12. And they put in a grade separation here. And so this is after the grade separation. So they come out Hudson Road. This was the same location you saw. And then now they had a bridge. And there was actually like an interchange here. So this is pretty early. This was, uh, uh, the other thing they did is, uh, once again, I'm gonna go back. The other thing that happened when they did the highway 
is this little jog here, the highway cut it off. And so they had to go, and uh, this is like 1948 or so, uh, got rid of like a half a block and a, half, and a block here and went straight across. So they stayed on the north side of the highway. Here we are down uh, at the Y at uh, Burns and Earl. And up here, kind of at the end of the picture is where we just were up at uh, Highway 12. This is a fan trip. And here's looking east. So uh, the short line cars would Y out here and then it was single track east on Burns Avenue. Now this is that little extension to Mounds Park. You've maybe seen this before, it's a postcard. And these are the, these are the sightseers. Um, which made a regular stop there from uh, oh, about 1898 or so, whenever they opened this, um, until oh, about 1908 when the sightseers quit. Okay, so now we're down towards the east end of it, within, oh, say, a block or so of the east end at English. And you can see it's single track on Burns Avenue. And then you turn around, and you can see there's not a lot of development here. And here's the Y. The Y went off into kind of a vacant lot. Here's a closer up view of the Y. And here's a car in the Y. And so anyway, this, uh, this little free shuttle ran from 1914 to 1931. And then when they finally went and threw routed the service uh, to Fort Snelling and did away with the shuttle. So now the other one that really quit early was 1938, and that was State and Robert, and that went across the Robert Street Bridge. Here's a picture of it. It was uh, paired with Jackson. Um, earlier, it was paired with Rice. Um, this is another one of those short cars, as you can see, a lightly traveled line. By the way, on Hope Street, um, when they got rid of it, they were already running the bus to Stillwater. Hope Street was on East 4th Street. Stillwater, the Stillwater bus was on 6th Street. And the Stillwater bus had been running express. Well, they just allowed it to make local stops. And so they didn't have to replace the, uh, the East 4th Street line with anything. So anyway, the uh, you can see Rice and State. And it came across the original Robert Street Bridge and went down to Concord for about a block and then upstate. And this is the only shot we have. This is at the corner of Robert and Annapolis. Oh, wow. So we're a wide out. And of course, that was the city limits. And at the time here, it was uh, Hamlin South Roberts. So, you know, they, they switched which ones they threw routed with all the time. Now, in, in 38, when they got rid of this, they had purchased um, in the 20s, the bus route to South St. Paul that went Concord, uh, State Street, Robert, and went all the way out to South St. Paul. And that literally ran on the same streets as the streetcar line, so we had a duplication of service. All they did was just have the bus pick up the old streetcar passengers. Stryker. Stryker is another one that quit early in 48. And of course, it went across the Wabasha Bridge and it went down through the pla the flats. Now there's just, none of these buildings are here anymore. This was in the floodplain and it would flood periodically. Now, one of the cool things, I, I don't know if you can see it up here, but does anybody remember the stair tower that went up to, oh, up to the top of the bluff? It lasted until maybe 10 years ago or so and they took yeah, it down. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it was structurally unsound after a while. Yeah, it was green. Yeah. Yeah. And and here's a stair tower, and you can see this is in the 1890s. So that shows how old it was. That's where that big rock slide was a couple of years ago that shut down the street for six, eight months. That's correct. Oh. And I think it was after the stair tower was gone. Oh, yeah, it was just about two years ago. And then right around the corner yeah. here was this Castle Royale Caves, you know, the Cave yeah, Night the Club. Caves. Yeah. Just for sale last time you saw. Yeah. yeah. I had a wedding reception there in the caves. I've been there for quite a few of them. Yeah. yeah. You still take the gangster tour and they started there. Yeah, yeah right. And there's so still anyway, bullet holes, still bullet holes on the uh, on the mantle of the fireplace where they 
gangsters had a shootout. <laughs> so anyway, we don't have any other pictures until we get down to the corner of a striker in Annapolis. And uh, there's a number of Y shots here. So I got a couple, litter. three of them. What litter? Well, uh, commercial building there. Once again, this is the city limits of West St. Paul. Looks like the uh, people catcher uh, caught some flotsam or jetsam there. Yeah, it looks like cardboard to me. Picking up litter. Yeah. And here's another one there at the Y. And that's all we have for Stryker. We got a couple of other pictures at that Y, but they were redundant. So then Cherokee, which is Smith Avenue, referring to Cherokee Heights, which is the neighborhood uh, up at the top of the high bridge. We have a little bit more on this. And of course, this was the last one. These ran until 1952. And uh, so this they ran with PCCs. Um, it was Hamlin Cherokee was, was the route combination. So here you are up in City Hall looking at the Wabasha Street Bridge. That building's still there on the island. Yeah, yeah, that was the old, uh, what does it say on there? Rowing Club. Yeah, it was the Rowing Club. Still is. <laughs> Tugboat yeah, it's, Annie's. Tugboat Annie's, yeah. And this is a few blocks short of the end of the line. We don't have any others at interim locations on the line. You know, every time um, Dave French finds more photos on eBay, I'm always hoping it will be one of these rare locations that we've never seen before. And a lot of these St. Paul lines, because they quit earlier, they just didn't get photographed as intensely as the Minneapolis lines. I think those are our original elm trees, because my new elm tree looks just about like that. You know, that and then the arms going up. Sounds right. So then they would have stretched across the road. And as you can see, this is what they called a supermarket back in those days. Pretty typical for a supermarket, yeah. actually. Here's a really old picture that shows the, once again, this line ended at Annapolis at the city limits, and so you can see the Y, uh, kind of pre-development. And here's a streetcar actually on the Y. And now I have a bunch of these newspaper photos. A, uh, a PCC, I don't know how he did it, but he backed off the back of the Y and went like another block and a half before he came to rest. And they're trying to put him back on. So you see they got a truck in the, they got a truck hauling and, and he's not on rails. He's like a block short of the rails right now. Wow. And, a, and another truck in the back. How did he get enough momentum to do that? This is a really good question because the end of track is right <laughs> up here where my cursor is. Doesn't look like that much of a grade. No, no, it's it's more or less flat. Very talented, huh? Yeah, just That's really so determined, resourceful. Yeah, yeah. We used all kinds of hell with the pavement with just the flanges riding. Yeah, it's a record that still stands, actually. <laughs> <laughs> 